What's up everyone, it's your boy Marsman here. Welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I review Strategic Mind The Pacific. As a longtime gamer, I have played various games from all genres. One of my favorite genres of gaming are turn-based strategy titles. As a history buff, it only makes me feel more inclined to play these games when there's a historical significance involved. It seems that it was my luck to land upon Strategic Mind The Pacific since it fits the description. Strategic Mind the Pacific takes place during the World War II era following the Pacific Campaign from the point of view of both the United States and Japanese forces. This game was released previously on the PC back in 2019, so this review will focus on the Xbox port of the game. In my review, I will give the good, the bad, and my final verdict. When looking at the good, I need to first talk about the gameplay. Overall, this game does a great job giving the player an authentic strategy-based game that prioritizes the historical-based vehicles weapons, and strategies that were engulfed in World War II. Each vehicle has its own benefits and drawbacks, and it's up to the player to learn which unit to use to maximize the situation. When choosing your next move, you need to be aware of the different weapons and moves that are possible for each unit before your turn ends. Whether you are using the battleships to mow down incoming landing parties, or Hellcats to initiate a dogfight, the varying moves were much needed in this game and it made the gameplay experience better. In the aftermath of an operation, you have a chance to use your command points to upgrade your unit's abilities or strengthen the current moves they have. This really gives the player the ability to come up with multiple means of attack and it opens up the replayability for future playthroughs. I really believe the gameplay is the biggest positive in my initial playthrough. Another positive I saw was this game's art style. Mainly the music and story direction were exactly what you would expect in a World War II game. I felt that one of the best things in this game was the fact that you would be following a path that you as the player get to choose. Whether you are following the standpoint as the United States or the Empire of Japan, you lead an operation against your enemy in historically accurate battles. As a fan of history, I really thought the attention to detail to the vehicles was very well done and it helped the experience. The music of the game was surprisingly good as well. I felt the first cutscene was more intense due to the music because it set the stage of the time period. The in-game matches also received a much needed touch of music. A strategy game that did not include any good tracks only makes it seem longer. The music, vehicles, and general direction of the story were great additions to the game. With the good, we need to talk about the bad. This game unfortunately feels that the port to the Xbox console had difficulty with animations throughout the cutscenes of the game. Throughout my playthrough, any time there were cutscenes between major characters, there were major issues with the voice matching to the lips movement. The general animations felt clunky and awkward, and it kind of hurt the realism that we saw in the gameplay and art style that was set up well. On the PC port of the game, they may have had an easier time fixing these issues, but on the Xbox port, it was too rough to not notice. In my opinion, this game would have done itself a favor by using still images that are historically accurate instead of using animation because there were times that the animations had hurt the experience. Along with the animations, the writing for the scenes and in-game lines seemed to be drawn out and very cringy at times. There seemed to be several awkward pauses throughout, which did not flow well in these long monologues. These lines added on the drawn-out pacing, which made cutscenes seem more like a chore. In the first major scene of the game, it took around 17 minutes of cutscenes and dialogue before the player had ever entered into action. For any game, it would not be good pacing to have the player wait this long to get into their first operation. The writing seemed to be bland for major characters, and the attempts to make them have enthusiasm came off being more detrimental to the game rather than amplifying. To really enjoy this game, I feel that writing larger cutscenes did the exact opposite compared to what developers wanted. Let the gameplay be what the player is doing more often. Lastly, the ease of access to this game definitely needs work. I have not played a strategic mind game in the past, so when going to this review, I was going in blind. This game did not do any favors for me or any new players looking to try this game for the first time. In the first mission after a long cutscene, you're thrown into the conflict with no clue on what is the next goal for your units. It seems to be expected that you will learn on the fly and for most gamers, they would be lost in the process of what to do. Even being an experienced gamer, I felt this was a struggle in the beginning, just trying to understand the do's and don'ts of the game. No tutorial on what different types of units you have, or even learning the basic function of attacking different enemy groups. A large-scale strategy game needs more help learning the basics before being sent out on an operation. Overall, this game has a few positives and negatives. The gameplay seems to be the biggest positive of this title, due to the fluid movement and the many ways to combat other forces. Varying ways to strategize against your enemy using upgrades to real historical vehicles and weapons was a blast. The attention to detail in the art style bringing in historically accurate vehicles as well as a good soundtrack made the atmosphere feel like an epic war. However, the negatives seem to outweigh the positive overall. Too many cutscenes cause the pacing to feel drawn out and bland. The best part of the game is the gameplay, but it seems that most of the time you're watching animations 
that are not polished more often than playing the game itself. On the Xbox port of this game, it seems that some basic movements and character models looked incomplete. The ease of access seems to be limited to those that have played the series before, and there needs to be more done to help new players feel as if they can jump into the game. I'm giving this game a 5 out of 10. This game has potential to be a good strategy game at its core, but the pacing of the game, broken animations, and lack of ease of access really hurt the Xbox port of this title. With future updates, I'm sure the port will get better in time, but in its current state, there are a lot of things that need to be adjusted. For more gaming content, reviews, and live streams, come check out the YouTube channel. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. See you, everyone.